right are you like it yes it seems like okay uh cool let me just quickly check hey rahul hey ankit thanks for joining in uh all right so i guess we're live in that case somewhere so hey everyone good morning good afternoon good evening to everybody who has joined us in from different parts of the world uh i'm harshit paul and i'll be the host for this session we are honored to host you at the first edition of testmu conference uh before we begin uh, let me quickly take care of a few housekeeping items this session will be recorded and uh, along with that all the other sessions as well that we are conducting at testmu and you can find these recorded sessions over lambda test youtube channel so in case you're not already subscribed to lambda test make sure you go search it over to the youtube and just hit the subscribe button over there we would also like to thank all of our partners for supporting us and being a part of this event we encourage you all to go and check out their booths from the reception area if you wish to connect with them later having said that let me quickly introduce you to our speaker somya shridharmurthy uh, based out of amsterdam somya is a seasoned product quality leader with deep experience in handling quality delivery for various software solutions Being an accessibility advocate, Somya mentors development teams to adapt inclusive development as part of their SDRC. She believes in technology-driven solutions and hence drives the test team in achieving better ROI through test automation. Today, she is going to discuss how microservice architecture is gaining momentum with APIs taking over the stage, and why she thinks test processes should shift the focus towards API test-first strategy. She'll also dive deeper into API test lifecycle management and discuss the salient practices to be implemented within an agile development team. And having said that, I'll pass my mic to you, Somya. Take it over. Thank you so much, Harshit. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, irrespective of which part of the world you are from, it's uh, nice to have you part of this event. And uh, thank you for joining this. So. let me so i didn't do my housekeeping that i didn't switch off my phone which i did right now so before i start um so you know my name i'm samya shridharmurthy i am currently based out of amsterdam uh currently working as an engineering manager at a company called lito we are um saas based digital uh, b2b organization who serve creative minds you can connect with to me in any of these social media platforms i also run a very active meetup uh through from amsterdam called apians So that's a little bit about me, and uh, so let's start. Uh, what's the topic that I I have to say and discuss in uh, today's uh, session? So it's something called face angle of API testing. So when I put this uh, title, I was questioning myself: Does this topic even make sense? Does it have any meaning, or is it just I'm trying to you know play around with some English keywords around uh, to make it more sound more peppy? but um let me tell you it's not uh, it makes a lot of sense especially in the current market uh in the past decade as we have seen a lot of transformations happening in the businesses not just in the pure breed tech industries but also um businesses from several and different aspects uh, and backgrounds so when that is happening uh, we should be aware of where the industry is moving from the technology perspective what is coming in um and uh, how we as a software testers have to be prepped um, ourselves in terms of skills in terms of work in terms of delivery so that we do justice and also keep ourselves afloat in this industry so having said that let me move ahead I have very less slides, guys. So uh, let me do justice for my slides at least. Uh, so cutting the chase and coming directly to the point of the future, uh, which we all are interested in, and sometimes we also get anxious about where is this industry moving. Uh, the skill set that I have is: can I just sustain, or will I just get obsolete? It's a very frequently asked questions. But if you see, um, the one thing that I directly want to hit towards the bullseye is the microservices. So. i briefly mentioned about the transformation that has happening for the last decade uh not just uh for the companies who want to come into the online space but also the companies who are purely tech breed even themselves they are undergoing transformations it can be through process it can be through digital and it can be even from the in the innovation perspective what does it mean is the way we are implementing the solutions and the applications is changing and the the game is a changing big way what do i again mean by this is there was a time when everything has to be done um a methodical way where 
I, I need to set up my own infrastructure. I need to have resources to uh, do my job, a backend developer, front end developer, middle layer, network person, uh, security guy, performance, you know, whatnot. Everything has to be methodically and procedurally set up, which needed a lot of investment. And business was not uh, something um, viable to everybody who would like so, to do so that. I think, uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to barge in. I think there is some uh, issue with the slides here. Could you uh, confirm which slide you're on? I feel so, some of I'm, folks are saying it's frozen. The future? I'm All showing right, something yeah. called future with the microservices. Microservice, yeah, that, that's what we're on. All right, just wanted to confirm. Thanks, please go on. Yeah. Yeah. So before I move ahead and uh, start building my story, it is important to let know what's happening in the industry so that you can always connect back why I chose this topic. So where was I? Uh, I was mentioning about how a business is being set up, which was very methodic and procedural. But now it's not like that. We are pretty much on the quick on the foot. Everything is available just like a grocery shopping and um, a business can be up and running within six hours, uh, keeping all the financial and the legal things aside. If I had to purely address from a tech perspective, uh, I, uh, I have a, a striking idea drinking mojito on a beach and I want to become a business person where I want to sell my spices or the gardening items online. I will be able to just do it within a few hours. So that's where we are today. And, and that is simply possible because of the microservices and the cloud infrastructure. The people have moved from being a heavily invested server companies into a serverless um, uh, kind of uh, way of application development, which is happening. And behind all these things, there is one thing that is you know, pushing um, as a catalyst, and that's API. And uh, everywhere that you see that's happening, uh, all the small uh, applications, the services that's coming uh, everywhere that, that can be connected through the APIs, not just in the application development, but also you know, stitching the fabric of this entire application development. APIs is, uh, is kind of a hinge. So now having said that, let me move to the next slide where I want to show the importance of microservices in the present decade. This is the latest uh, data or the statistics that is that I have grabbed from statista.com. These are the businesses and the applications where it's embracing microservice way of application development and the solutions offering, where uh, the companies or the solutions with the business intelligence and the data analytics are the top, top chart. And if you see, um, finance is grabbing or moving towards it. Finance embraces everything like banking, taxation, trading industry. Um, so everything that's related to the money um, so is also embracing microservice. In fact, if you see, the pace is faster than anyone could have imagined. Um, and then you see ERP companies as well. So if you see some of the ERP giants present in the market, they were heavily uh, invested in the on-prem services. But now it's a heavy investments are done towards move towards cloud simply because it's easier, it is easy to scale, it is easy to develop, easy to maintain. And um, um, I mean, it's innumerable amount of possibilities uh, it's gonna provide. Uh, the heavy load is taken off from the business aspect to the application aspect itself, but it is taken care by some other company and it's available for you as a pay as, pay as you go, which also makes it affordable for you. So that's why many companies you see are moving towards cloud infrastructure or the cloud uh, way of building the applications. Moving to the to the next one is I want to share a little bit of story uh, here about imagine yourself in one of these industries. I have been blessed or I can say myself very lucky being in part of some of these industry uh, pay as you forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so some of these industries like micro enterprises, uh, small medium enterprises or the large enterprises. So what do I mean by this? This is the size of the business um, that you see. Uh, micro enterprises are anywhere between like 15 to 20 uh, people organization. It's mostly like a startup or a new startup kind of a setup. And here uh, the main anthem that runs is somehow hook or crook. We just want a working solution to be delivered out there in the market. All the process procedures, Gaya Bharme, put it behind in the warehouse. I am not going to worry about it. Um, so I just want my working software to be out there so that I can generate revenue. And when I generate revenue, I can go for the series uh, of a funding to the next level of funding and bring in more money so that I can expand my business. And that's all what it runs. Rest all takes the backseat. Now, coming to the other end of the spectrum, which is a large enterprises. Large enterprises, here, the game is totally different, but the fear is still the same, that business has to be there. Somehow we have to run, but 
many things at stake here is uh, the brand name, the business revenue, which has already been established, the existing production customers. So the game here is also kind of tricky. Uh, so the ecosystem is driven heavily through process, procedures, uh, investing into um, a lot of uh, full stops, commas, you know, even though you can just push the code, still you have to follow the process that is well defined within an organization, not because um, you have to do, but it's just that ensuring uh, nothing is at stake because you have like millions of dollars or money that's coming in as a part of the business and you simply can't, you know, make it a kid's play. Now, breaking these two in somewhere in median, which is like the small and the medium industries or the medium organizations, this, these are the organization anywhere between 100 to 250 uh, employees. The actual challenge comes in this set of organizations. See, in micro enterprises, we know we already have challenges with the resources. So we settle to the point. When we go into the large organizations, we know uh, we have innumerable number of people. Resources are available at, uh, at a finger click and you can, you, know, you can keep moving people that's again not a problem. Or if not anything, we can still go and hire, do a rapid hiring and get the things done. But when it comes to the small and medium, everything works within an iron triangle. You have to work with the existing resources. You have to work with the existing solutions. You cannot invest much into the tool toolings out there in the market. Um, and the main thing is you have to work with the resources that is available in the present market. So my company is a small as is an SME. So I am limited as a leader, I am limited with the number of resources that I work with. And trust me, tech industry has been very kind, embracing people from different aspects of life, no matter what their education is, no matter what their professional background has been. Um, tech industry openly uh, welcomes everybody. So when they do, uh, as a team uh, leader, as a team member, I should be kind enough to create an ecosystem that everybody feels comfortable in working and building the solutions together, not getting um, judged over something that, okay, he does not come from, or he or she does not come from the professional background, professionally trained tech background. So, you know, kind of, it's okay. We can decide ourselves. These things are pretty common. Um, and it is pretty common in SMEs mostly because we are running behind the delivery timeline. We need the skills, we need the resources, we need the toolings, and we are restricted with the budget. There's a lot that's happening uh, within this. And because I have been part of each of these industry, I kind of relate to uh, the anthems that run in each of these industries, and I completely understand. But one thing for sure in all these three um, ecosystem is we all want testing to be done to the best at its possibility. Uh, we want uh, quality at its best, everything at its best, but we had to still make it run with the existing tooling solutions and the people available around us. So now, because my topic is restricted and mainly focused towards API, uh, and it is API because companies and the future of the application development is moving towards a cloud-based application development, which is purely of having your own microservices, connecting these microservices, uh, communicate through APIs. That will be is going to be the future. The way the test process and the test strategy is going to take a U-turn. I mean, U-turn means does not mean it goes back to the old age, but then I mean, it takes a very different phase shift. And um, we no more can be superficial. We no more can be of the part that, okay, I clicked on a few buttons, I found these errors, and I am treating the symptoms. It has to be an inside-out approach. So the inside-out approach simply means you have to be more near to the code, more near uh, to the te uh, to technical aspect of the implementation. Now, this is one side. Stitching my story of the other side, where I still have to work my way around with existing resources. Let me be very frank with you. I have worked with the team where people come from visual arts background, chemical engineering background, and people come from acting, singing, ballet dancers. And um, we have people coming from different aspects of life. Um, but still, how can I make uh, things work? Upskilling the time, the investment that goes behind it. Everything comes uh, at once, uh, kind of giving a heart palpitations. How am I going to do this? How am I reach the delivery? Everything is possible. So uh, that is that is the crux of this whole talk that I'm trying to build and set the foundations. Now, moving to my next slide. 
So let me tell you the challenges of a leader, which I am already been telling you already. First is a skill gap. Uh, I want to be as respectful as possible from the people coming from different aspects of life and professional educations. Uh, but coming, uh, looking, looking at the software testing or the technical aspects, we definitely need skills. So today I want to leave software testing and I want to be a ballet dancer. I still need to reskill myself. I want to get lean. I have to be more flexible. I have to learn dancing. I need a trained, uh, a trained uh, a professional uh, dancer who can teach me how I move, make my moves. Um, so all these things is important. So likewise, the other other way around. So if the person is coming to software tech industry, then there is definitely a skill gap, and somehow I have to fill it up. So that's the first challenge as a leader. The second thing is a resource fulfillment. Like I said. I'm, I'm beggars can be choosers. So in, in some markets, some skill sets are like definitely not available. Sometimes they become a unicorn. Uh, so I had to still run the show and I had to still support my company business and its goals with the available resources that I have. Third is a capacity availability. Sometimes we may have a lot many number of people more than we expect, but we also have uh, been stretched with the multiple projects, hot fixes, legacy applications, upgrades, migrations, you know, whatnot. So, so many things can be happening and with the existing resources, capacity can become another challenge. The, the last one is a shorter delivery times. The more of these problems are increasing at one end, the delivery times are also getting shorter. This is kind of like... I don't know, um, sprinkling salt over your injury. It's That's what you say. Uh, but it sounds better in my local language. Trust me. Uh, but like kind of, uh, that's um, that's what is happening. So my product, product management group keeps chasing me. You know, what can we release it in the next 10 days? Can we release it in the next 15 days? Yeah, of course we can do. But then, you know, there is, there is a risk that is involved. So that's a challenge of a leader. Now, looking from the other aspect of the angle, like the challenges of a team member. It's not just the leader who has a challenge, but the team member also faces certain challenges. Um, if today I give a, an option for my team members, do you want to do a UI testing, do a functional testing, uh, or you want to do an API testing uh, and do write code for the APIs and then do they blindsided, they simply choose a functional testing. No, I want to write the UI uh, automation simply because it's easier to connect, easier to digest, and something that you can visually see. Uh, but that's not the same with the APIs. Um, there is an assumption and then a bias that's already involved that um, kind of I may not understand. This may need a lot of technical knowledge. This may need some this, that. Uh, and I may not be knowing. And this anxiety builds in. And secondly is also the imposter syndromes. The more I talk to different people from the similar industry, I start realizing that people have this imposter. I may not be good enough to do it. Uh, I am not the right person to do it because I don't, I am not professionally trained. Um, maybe I don't do justice to this job. So I should not be doing this. So usually this is a one-on-one -on -one and in, a, in my mentoring sessions, this is a usual thing that I get to hear. But trust me, this is not the case. Everybody is completely capable of doing every part of testing, not just API, any testing for that matter. But now I want to address and restrict only to the API testing for this session. Unclear and no documentations. If you see, um, I think one of the latest reports, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the source, that uh, I am at least like more than 67% of the team do not give, um, sorry for my language, a shit about writing documentation about the APIs. They simply want to develop. They simply want to deploy. They simply want to get it used. Uh, they don't care uh, to provide the right documentation, be it an internal um, uh, be it an internal uh, API or uh, open API, which has been shared or the external API or the partner API, no matter what type of API it is, they don't give a shit about writing a documentation. And that that makes it the game a lot more challenging for the people who are in the other end. Maybe it's a product end, business end or towards uh, the testing. The last one is the absence of supporting tools. So many companies and many teams want to do API testing. I want to test my microservices. I want to test my REST API. I want to do this. I want to do this. But then, okay, can you see some tool which is like free so that you can just get the job done? We don't want to invest. Um, so certain things that you get to hear, which is not so pleasant, but still you have to live with it. Let me address this truth. This usually happens. Anything... Um, all the investment that's with regards to software testing takes a backseat. It's like, kind of we'll see next year. You know what, you know, our developers want this tool or this one, so we are taking the license. Maybe for this tool, we can invest uh, tomorrow. Um, so 
these are some things that we uh, get to hear very commonly uh, within the teams. So I kind of rushed through so that I can show you some demos and use my time for the demos as well. All these details, all this uh, foundation, I set it up just to let you know there should be a way you can draw the balance so that you run the business, you, you can connect to the product team, you can connect to the developers and still do uh, the right amount of testing that is somehow possible along with the skilling uh, that is required to do this job. Now, in my own case, I want to present, I don't know how it's running outside, but one thing that has helped me as a leader within my team is making use of um, uh, postman flows. Um, this is not something that I am recommending go by, do it. But I'm just here sharing my experience, how we were able to overcome the challenge and connect the product, tech, and the testing together, uh, making use of these visual flows. Let me uh, stop sharing my screen and then go back sharing my entire screen. Cool. I hope you guys will be able to see my entire screen where I am trying to show a Postman flow. Now, um, yes, we can see that. Postman Just wanted to confirm we can see that. Yes, sure. Uh, is it visible? Yes, it's visible. Clearly, yes. Okay, cool. So, uh, this is one sample. Um, Actually, uh, my idea for this session was to show the internal workings of my own company's open API, but for some reason, uh, something is not working, our usual case, and usually happens when when you eagerly want to show it in, in a session or the customer demo is when it decides I'm going to rest, right? That's what happened with me today. So I'm here with a very simple example where I can show a visual flow of the API. Um, before I jump into this, let me show you... Uh, this API. So um, this is the API that I'm using uh, for an example. What it basically does is takes a parameter, which is a name, and then it finds out where this name is. So it would works. probably be best if we can, uh, you know, just zoom into the browser a little bit because uh, a lot of folks are not able to see the screen clearly. Okay. So are you able to see now? Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah, it looks clear enough to me. Yes. OK, cool. Um, so this is a simple get API that I am using. This is a free API for the demo purpose I'm using, where I key in a name, and then it shows what is the probability of a match from which country it originates from. So this is that simple API. Now, if I give this API for my team members and ask them, you know what, this API has been developed, you have to test. This gives a list of countries in the form of uh, an array. And then you have to take a JSON output. Um, for first, you have to parse it. And then you have to convert it to a JSON, apply a loop through, and then find a country which is matching to the US and see if it is gonna uh, if it's gonna show up in the result and apply an assert statement to check if it is working. It's cool to say and sounds nice, but then when you actually have to put it across to someone who comes from a very non-technical or who's not even introduced to API any any point in time, it gets challenging. And you know, the technical anxiety kicks in. I don't even know, maybe I'm not good enough to do it. But one thing that has helped personally uh, with me in our team is when we have this API, developers also provide these examples, like uh, a positive example and a negative example, which means and how an error can be generated and how um, a positive response can be generated. Everything can be, everything is saved by the developers when they create these APIs. And we as a testers, what we do, we come to the flows and we can create our own flow. It makes it easier for me to uh, explain my team what I'm trying to do here. I simply create a request and grabbing the body where the response is stored. In the response, I'm very interested to check only the country. So I'm taking only the country and I'm looping over the country one by one. And then I'm checking if there is any match towards US if so, I am going to show it in the default terminal. If not, I'm going to show it as a rejected value. So this makes the game a whole lot easier to explain to people how this works and how they can make sense. This is the positive scenario. Now, I can come up with a more negative. The more I churn out and think about it, I can also generate more scenarios out of this. The advantage with this is, firstly, I'm able to see. Secondly, I'm also able to communicate with my product team better. So. There was a time when a product owner used to come up with only what customers want from a superficial 
functional aspect, but now product owners are challenged to come up to the API layers itself because there are API as a service as well. There are industries where API is provided as a service. Um, so in those cases, there will be technical product owners. They uh, come up with their requirements and they have to communicate with the development team and also the tech test team. This can be a holy grail and one simple uh, part where you can just come in and see as a team together how multiple APIs are communicating with each other, um, uh, what are the assertions or the conditions or the examples that you can put in. Uh, and then um, you can also do testing. So if there is something that is not working, it can actually also, let me just, uh, okay, before I jump in there, let me, okay, so this has the problem that it doesn't zoom out. I'm sorry about that. Um, so, oh. this is uh, very, I just wanted to show how this works, but then that's not happening. Let's see about that. I also want to create this and show how easy it is so that, you know, um, Okay, so this is a terminal that you see. I simply will execute, let's see what happens. Oh, that's cool. So that got executed and we are in the default terminal. So if there's any matching towards US, it shows the probability of listing and then it's default terminal. The test need not have to st stop here. Maybe you can also add one more conditions where you can check the probability if it is matching to the numbers um, and, and things like that. And this is a rejected value terminal where you see AU and NZ being implemented. So the whole idea of this concept, what I'm trying to build is when we have a challenge with regards to skill, shorter delivery timelines with a lesser budget and whatnot, you can always find some middle ground out there in the market to get the things done. Um, okay, so I'm not in the air mate, so let me quickly jump back there. Would you guys like to see this, how I build one simple scenario so that you get a hang of uh, this flow? Yes, cool. Let's do it then with the same API. Awesome, guys. Um, okay, how you do? It's a new. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Yeah, I guess. Let me stop. So um, I just have to add a new flow and let me say lamp test. And this is a canvas that you get. Um, and every small thing that you're gonna interact with in this uh, canvas is called as a block. Um, if you want to send a request, it's called a send request block. Let's add that. When you do it, um, everything is blank in here you will get an opportunity to add the API that you would like to call. In my case, it is resting under this folder called public API, simple APIs, and then I'll go finding nationality, and then you see this is my API. Um, and then if I'm making use of any environment, I can still add. I'm making use of a Postman API environment. You can just add. Um, the beauty of this canvas is you can add as many environments as possible you want and making use of it. And also APIs from a different collections can also be used. Um, there is a passing option being given, given, which is auto. So there is no need to implement a code where you can take a response body, convert it, and then pass the response in the JSON format and then read, or um, which can get complex uh, when I explain. But then this is pretty much easy. Now, to keep it this simple, let me add a terminal. Terminal is a place where you see the output, the name itself suggests and this is the terminal. So let's see what happens in here. When I just kick off the request, you see the uh, this is the response body that you usually get when you execute the API, correct? So now let's clear this off. We'll keep it for the later. Now uh, I'll close this as well. I'll go back to my collection. And I'll show you the response body, finding nationality, finding origin, kickoff. Okay. So what you see here is the response body, which we all know, correct? And what's the matter of interest for us is this, which is which is an array. Now, um, I don't have to write 100 lines of code to pass my array, right? So simply I'll go here. There's something called select data where I 
basically had to select. What is it I had to select is the body, of course, because that's where the response uh, is sitting. And then from here again, in the body, I have to select um, why is this happening? Okay. So here I have to select uh, in bar country, it should be slash country bar ID because uh, that is where the uh, this is this is what I'm trying to access. I'm trying to access country and the country ID. Pretty sure, uh, pretty sure I'll be bumped with some error in here. And then what I have to do once I get the list, I have to just do looping over it. So everything that I have to implement in terms of code is easily handled as part of the visual elements for me. And I can translate that very easily uh, my thoughts into uh, the blocks. I am looping over. So what happens is in this output, there will be one element that's coming at every time it runs in the loop. So basically, when it runs and I get each element, I basically have to add a condition statement, which means um, OK, problems with a short screen. Uh, data is equal to, why is it I'm already feeling this will fail? But then anyways, let me give it a try. Uh, data is equal to US. So this is what is my condition where I have to do. If my data is equal to US, then I want to display it in the terminal or do something else. But for now, let's say terminal. I'm pretty sure this is going to fail. Let's see. Yeah, cool. I expected that. Now let's find out what is it I was missing here. Okay. Uh, flows, uh, loop over list, um, slash in bar country, loop over. Uh, that's exactly what I've been doing here. Okay, going back to my list. Okay, guys, my bad day is running. Sometimes happens, right? So uh, I basically simply copy paste what I have done in there. Um, is this? Uh, so I basically from the body I have to uh, pick up country, which is not being showing here. I don't know why, but let me do it. Bugs sometimes in the solutions, and then I have to loop over. And I have to add a condition where it's the country ID. Data by country ID is US. No, um, usually this is not the case. It will give you the options right away. I am expecting there should be some error in the, in, in the flow. Uh, so please do not <laughs> judge this here. Uh, OK, that's reference. And then when it passes, I want to put it to terminal. Cool. OK, let's try my luck here. When I just do a send, mm -mm. so this is, I'm pretty sure something is not working in the tool, uh, but usually it should. Quite embarrassing. Uh, I didn't expect that coming over. But this is the working solution that you can see, which usually works. Um, so I'll come back to the air meet and stop sharing and let you know, uh, yeah, sometimes we have this um, bad days. Oh, yeah, that's a data country ID. Thank you. Should I have to go back and do it? OK, so uh, the basically what I was trying to do here and tell you is you as a leader or as a software test engineer within a, a, a team, there is no need to get bogged down. The future is coming to be through the APIs and you have to somehow find a way you can strike a balance of upskilling yourself, supporting your team, connecting to the business and yet grow yourself as a person. So don't have to worry. Um, you just have to open up for the innumerable solutions that's out there in the market and, you know, just get going as an awesome person.
Okay, so in this way, I'll just open up for some questions if you have. Um, I'll be happy to take some. Sure, sure. So in fact, we've had a lot of questions coming in, uh, but I, I would uh, want to emphasize here on uh, one of the questions that got extended or right onto the demo that we were trying to figure out. Uh, apparently, it didn't work out fine, but the question goes like, you know, basically, Vamsi wanted to know if you could also showcase how data drive with uh, different combinations using flow in the API session. And uh, can we also do the schema validation using the flow that you're trying to showcase? Uh, can we do a schema validation? Um, that's a good question. I have always done schema validation making use of uh, JavaScript. I have not done it. Should be possible, I guess. But if I answer to this question, I will be lying. Uh, what was the other question? All right. So uh, we do basically, it? yeah. Could uh, could you also show, please show how we can data drive the API with different combination using flows? Um, can you help me elaborate this? What is a data drive? You mean, do you want to keep passing more details or inputs into an API? That's what you mean. Probably, Mom. So you can you could follow up on that statement. Yes, that that's what it, it was. Uh, that, so that's the question was for yes. So that's a very good question in that case. Uh, so you can't keep passing details. Um, this is a static uh, kind of a test. So you have to provide every details already in there for this flow to work. This is not dynamic where you can keep generating. However, there is a possibility that you can create a variable, but out of something, not like you keep generating uh, some value and then pumping it into the flow and that works. I guess they may reach there someday, but right now the tool does not support that. Right. I hope that answers. Uh, in case it doesn't, please drop a follow-up thought on that. And uh, we had a question that came in as soon as the session started. And it's a pretty debatable one. And it goes like, what will be the future of monolithic applications? What are your thoughts on that? It's going to die someday. So it's, it's as rude as it can get. So monolith will not be the future. You can already see many, uh, many companies and businesses um, ranging from any ERP giants to as small uh, micro enterprises as possible they're not choosing to be monolith anymore. In the cloud infrastructure, people are moving towards more uh, microservices and uh, having uh, more atomic um, um, functions or details um, stitched together as a fabric in an application. Um, so if you're talking about monolith, it's not going to sustain for long. As long as legacy applications are surviving, they will be there, but then it's going to do a sunset. Speaking of opinions, uh, there's another question which talks about, uh, you know, what are your opinion on pack tests between APIs? Uh, what is my opinion? Well, as subjective, it's very subjective. Pack tests are good. It's kind of a contract testing uh, between microservices. So uh, because we do not have any concrete way of um, or other alternatives of testing that's out there in the market. So right now, pack has taken over and I guess... Um, if I understand it very right, pack testing is still um, for the people who are technically driven and more towards inclined towards development. It's not come to the general testing market where everyone can embrace it and start doing it because it involves technical understanding. Um, so kind of, so that's my opinion. Uh, but there will be more solutions coming in as far as I know and people that I'm talking to. Uh, there, are, there, there are different solutions being decided innovative solutions coming in the market in the next few days to do the same. Great. Uh, so another question which goes about, should we start with API automation first or with the UI automation? Why do you want to put a fire in the session, Manish? But anyways, so let me tell you, going back to the same thing what I explained before. So in the last few decades, we have been taking a su superficial level of automation, which is I come through the UI and somehow try to penetrate inside and then make my way or do something like that. But going forward, the way the businesses are moving, the way the infrastructure and the entire system architecture is changing, sooner or later, you land up doing inside out approach where you have to be more technical in nature, which is, of course, through APIs, through RPCs, uh, and then build your way towards UI, where UI will, like how the test pyramid goes, literally take the last position in, in the testing status. And the way the UIs are tested is also going to change, where only rendering is checked. No business functionality will be checked through UI, which, which is prevalent right now in the market, if I understand. 
from a test strategy perspective. Hope that answers your question. All right. So we have another one which says, uh, is there any tool or approach uh, that could help us visualize the map of microservices, check how they communicate? Uh, is there any tool or approach how to visualize map of microservices? Um, that's good. We still use me. We still use Miro just to um, represent uh, the blocks of the services that we have and how they're communicating. Um, we personally have not used anything within the team and I may not have an answer for this. I'm sorry. Uh, Alexander. All right. So what are your opinion on test serverless applications and how you plan a trigger? Ah, that's a very good question. So uh, that's the whole crux of the future. So if you see the monolith applications, once you start, it starts running from the line one of the code and runs to the last lines of the code and your whole application is running. But if you see in the microservices, the 10 services are communicating with each other. Even if one service is not up and running, the entire test suite is going to go for a toss. So that's where uh, I'm trying to build this whole picture that UI kind of automation is going to take a downtrend in the next few years that's coming by. Not the next one, two years, but definitely you can see over a decade, uh, this will wipe out the way the testing is happening. But mostly it will happen through uh, contract testings using making use of the pact or the API tests. And, and I mean, the test strategy is going to change to to that stage than the AP, uh, than the UI. Cool. Uh, what is the best practice end-to-end -end test for gRPC? That may be a wonderful question, but because I have not worked on gRPC, I'm not the right person to comment on this, and I'm sorry, Alireza. All right, let's take another one. What is the effect of API testing in ML and AI industry? Wow, that's like... Uh, what is the effect of API testing? Um, the future is API. It's going to be API in one form or the other. Um, it, uh, so the entire industry, be it blockchain, metaverse, um, AI, ML, or IoT, name any industry that's going to come in. API will be the building blocks of all these uh, arenas. So if you see, they will be the crux of it. So you will be there. You will see it. There's no, there's no escape from it. Got it. And this is a detailed one. Can you please help understand how meticulous does API documentation requires to leverage as testers' perspective, like other test artifacts? Does API documentation sticks for only on standard inputs, endpoints, URLs, output params, requests, environment, etc.? Wow, that's a long question. Can you please help understand how meticulous API documentation requires leverage testers' perspective? Um, so firstly, it has to address uh, why this API, what this API is doing, um, and its limitations. Clearly, not many teams will actually mention the limitations. There will be technical limitations. There will be business limitations. And then, of course, uh, the type of formats of responses that are supported um, and also the timings. Not many teams actually take care. When I am trying to upload or download, which is like, Somewhere I read this, like the 50% of product managers job nowadays. Uh, so that's like upload, download, or requesting any data from the DB. What should be the minimum time and the maximum time? The minimum and the maximum range has to be defined. I don't see teams doing it. It's very important. As a part of your test, this also should be included. Uh, types of authorizations um, and how these authorizations can be achieved. Uh, I, I said about the responses as well. So some of these things has to be clearly um, mentioned along with the examples that definitely helps the team to build more scenarios. So this should be part of it. Cool. Uh, how to test two-factor authentications or multi-factor by APIs? How to test two-factor and multi-factor enabled APIs? So this is a very uh, long topic, isn't it, uh, Ankit? So. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, I don't know if you have so much time to sit and discuss uh, this particular question to that length. Uh, but I definitely run an API sessions through Amsterdam. Um, we definitely can take that in, in that meetup and uh, discuss this in details. But Probably I hope it's okay. catch you up separately, Somya, to help us with a YouTube video for that as well, that we can push across Lambda test. Would be, yeah. would be useful for the viewers, definitely. <laughs> Sounds good. That's a, that's a good topic to pick up at. Uh, thanks, Ankit. Yeah, yeah, and it's a very important topic, in fact, actually. Yeah. Right. Why is API testing critical for business applications? 
Okay, so should I have to like get back from the start of my slide to repeat everything? So uh, why is the API testing critical for business applications? Simply because that's where the future is heading, uh, Sami. Um, so the future, what you see is IoT, Metaverse, Blockchain, uh, whatever the cool names that you get to hear, data analytics, business intelligence, everything will be built over APIs simply because the entire system architecture and the cloud infrastructure is changing. The way... Um, applications uh, are designed uh, is changing and the catalyst behind all this change is driven through API. So they become the crux kind of like a heart of the entire application. So it's that important, kind of like how important it is to have a blood in the body as important as it is to have APIs in the business applications. Got it. So next question is more about your recommendations on uh, any book, ebook that you would want to recommend. Uh, what author you prefer, please? Uh, I'm an author myself. I want to promote myself in this session. No, I'm not an author. So uh, any ebook where you get more knowledge, I see um, we as an organization, we are using Postman for all of our tasks with regards to the API. So if you're asking questions about the API books, I simply refer to the documentation, which is very good. Um, and I have not read any other API testing kind of a book apart from my, during my engineering. I usually go to the, documentations from the respective websites and uh, read through uh, when when I want to learn something. Cool. Uh, helps, yeah, I hope that does. And the next question is, which one would you recommend code-based or flow-based automation using API? See, I will be totally biased if I say, uh, if I answer this question, because definitely at any point in time, code-based API automation will give you more flexibility to try out more. But I have given you enough number of reasons and the challenges that I have to work or one may have to work within this business. Delivery time, budget, tooling, skilling. Um, it can be any of these. So in when, when you have to draw a balance, find a common space to get things moving, somehow justify, you have to find a, where, where you can draw the balance. And somehow I'm feeling in my present role, Postman Flows are helping me draw, draw that balance. When none of my team members come from any sort of computer science engineering background. I am so proud they come from various backgrounds. They have tried so many things and then they pitched into tech industry. And they are doing beautifully well uh, with, the, with the Postman flows where we are able to establish the test um, for our uh, APIs and they're able to connect and generate more scenarios. But if you ask me, I'll still go for the code base, but then I shouldn't be telling it loud, but kind of like I did it. Cool. And I guess the questions are going to keep on raining, but we have all uh, other sessions that are planned as well. So uh, yeah. unfortunately, this is, where, this is where we're going to have to draw the line and cut, cut it for this session for now. And uh, uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. Uh, special thanks to you, Soumya. Uh, this session was, in, uh, was pretty insightful. Definitely the audience loved it. Your energy was a cherry on top of that. And it's not every day we get to tune into a session where which is relatable to everyone, be it a fresher or a top-notch professional. And I hope our viewers can second that for me. Uh, we would be hosting all these recorded sessions over YouTube, just repeating that again. So in case there are any questions which we have not been able to address at this point of time from your chat window, feel free to drop them over the YouTube comment section and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. Happy testing and have a great day. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much. Cheerios. Take care, everyone.